And in, in looking at our the subject of deliverance, recognize that there's steps that, that go. It's not a quick, easy formula. As much as it is, it's you and I determining that we're going to walk with the Lord. And sometimes we're so discouraged deep down in our spirit that we don't think it can happen. Sometimes we've been beaten back by the by the throes of life. Sometimes we've been pushed aside. Sometimes circumstances have piled up. But the Lord wants you to understand that this is a spiritual battle. And in the spiritual battle, you have to understand that we don't see the battlefield the way the Lord does. We don't see the battlefield the way the devil does. We don't understand many of the ramifications of things that happened in our lives that have brought us to this place. That is why we are going to, at Beit Mashiach and in our teachings here, we are going to do everything we can. We're going to go over piecemeal everything, every area that you need from the scriptures and from experience that we've had and to help you get a handle on your deliverance, on your strengthening, on the Holy Spirit coming to you and showing you the way in which to walk. And there's a lot of things that need to happen, but first it's the determination in your heart that this is something that you want, that this is something that you actually have to have. And we want you to understand that tonight you have that, but it's a matter of reaching out and grabbing it. And that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit tonight. We're going to be bringing you these teachings on deliverance all the time. We're going to be going full force into it every Sunday morning at Beit Mashiach, starting next Sunday, hopefully, depending, you know, things could change because of the coronavirus stuff that's going on and can we even get together. But we are going to open up our Sunday morning services to our people in order for you to get the prayer you need. We're going to pray for healing. We're going to pray for deliverance, spiritual healing, inner healing, physical healing. The Lord wants you set free. The Lord wants all of us to walk in his way, and he needs for you just to have faith that he's going to take care of it. The, the proposition that the Lord gives us in uh, Isaiah 61 is so powerful that the Lord wants to bring into our lives right now everlasting joy, olam simcha in Hebrew. It says in Isaiah 61, 7, and I want you to get this because this is the promise that the Lord is given to those who spiritually want to enter into his kingdom. Instead of their shame, my people will receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, they will rejoice in their inheritance. And so they will inherit a double portion in their land and everlasting joy will be theirs. If you are the one tonight that is struggling, if, you're, if, you're, if you've seen nothing but defeat in your life, drugs has a hold of you, uh, habits have got a hold of you, uh, alcoholism, uh, lust, whatever the situation may be, the determination in your heart to get free needs to come to the front. Forget about your strength, forget about what you can do, you want to put it in the hands of the Lord, lay it right in the Lord's lap, because you have to realize without him, you can do nothing. Without the Lord building the house, your labor is in vain. Everything you're doing is wrong. The formulas, all the things that you've learned before, no wonder they've crashed on themselves. So you and I need to understand that we have got to fully surrender to the Lord to get the help we need. And that's what we want to look at tonight. Remember, how can we pray for you? We want to, um, you to understand that God's word is for you. God's word is the only thing that matters in this situation because his word is bigger than your problem. His word is life. His word is what gives us the sustenance we need, the nutrition we need spiritually. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So understand tonight that the Lord wants you just to submit to him it just reach out to the lord said lord help help me lord i submit to you it's as simple as that but it needs to be from your heart not from your head this is not a quick fix this is a lifelong deliverance that you're looking for tonight and we want you to understand that this is spiritual warfare all the time every day and we're going to be wading into this in a big way we're going to be looking at every scripture we can. We're going to look at the circumstances from every angle we can so that you can look at your life and what you need. And I pray that you'll get the help you need and you'll be delivered from the clutches of the enemy in your lifetime. What we're looking at, we want to have the understanding. We want to have understanding our need to be delivered by the Lord. 
You see, a lot of times we think that, Lord, well, I'll serve you as soon as I can get clean enough. I'll, I'll, I'll get to be with the Lord. That's not the way it goes. We come to the Lord with everything that is wrong with us. We come to the Lord with our habits, our smoking, our, our cussing, our lewdness, our, our darkness. We bring everything to the Lord. We can do nothing. He's the Savior. He's the Lord. Of course, he wants to set you free. But you have to want to be set free is the biggest issue. The biggest thing that you need to understand about being a believer in Jesus the Messiah is this, that he wants your life. He wants you to start living in heavenly ways now on this side of death. He wants you now to be set free. He wants you now to experience his kingdom. He desires for you to live with him all the days of your life. But we recognize, and he would show you, and you should recognize that many times the enemy has gotten into our lives. Sometimes he's gotten into our lives before we were born. Sometimes he's gotten into our lives when we were very, very young and we have been trapped and we have been deluded. We've been seduced into behaviors that are out of our control. And we, we struggle with things, the simplest things that some people uh, have no trouble with at all, we struggle with because we're bound up, we're oppressed, we're, we're taken captive by the enemy in many different ways. I could, talk, I could mention hundreds of different kinds of sins. You know whether or not you are set free or not. You know whether or not you are where you want to be with the Lord or not. This is between you and the Lord. We're here to help you get the need or get the needs met spiritually because unless, again, the Lord builds the house, you're laboring in vain and you need the help of the Lord by his spirit to be able to come through and to get to the place where you can bear good fruit in his kingdom. We're living in the last days right now. We're living in a day right now when the powers of darkness are so prevalent out there trying to take control of planet Earth. They have no future. They have no victory. All the victory is in Yeshua. The victory has already been provided for, and the Lord wants you to taste his triumph over the enemy now. All the things that you see that are blown up in the media and all the things that people are going crazy about mean nothing if you're set free. They don't, they don't matter at all if you're walking in the freedom of the Lord, if you're walking in the joy of the Lord, if you're walking with the presence of the Lord there and you know that he's there and you, his communication is upon your spirit every day, you're where you need to be. You can go through anything with the Lord. On the other hand, if you're living a carnal existence, if you're living a life where you're just you know bogged down by all the issues of this world, all all the uh, plots and all the conspiracies and all the things that are out there, you may consider yourself the greatest believer of all time, yet you're walking in carnality. You're walking in the fear of the world. You're walking in the fear of man. You're walking in the fear of governments. Listen, walk with the Lord. When you know that you're walking with Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, it doesn't matter what's going on in my life. I can make it through. I can go through anything with the Lord being at my side. And I know I have him at my side. And you want to have that, that confidence that he is there too. You want to have that confidence that he's powerful in your life, that he can make you strong, that he can set you free. And he wants to, and he desires to. So that's why we're trying to make this connection with you today. We want to see in your life demonic oppression eradicated, taken care of, gotten out of your life, out of your home, away from your family, every part of you, but it's going to take your heart being involved. It's not, like I said, it's not a, a formula you get in your head. If I follow steps A, B, C, and D, I'll be okay. No, there's a lot to take in, but it's about your heart before the Lord. The devil has no place in the life of the heart that wants to serve the Lord, the heart that wants to be with the Lord. If you remember even the story of the uh, gathering demoniac, he was completely possessed totally taken over by the demons, yet his will was he wanted to get to Yeshua. He wanted to get to Jesus because he knew that Jesus could set him free, and no demon, not even legion, not thousands of demons inside of him could stop him. Why? Because your will lined up with the Lord's will makes you a force that the devil cannot do anything about, and that is why what I'm saying to you tonight is there to set you free and to help you every step of the way. 
So we're looking tonight, and I've, I've talked about it before. God wants to break us out of where we've been in bondage. He wants us to have rivers of living water flowing through our lives by the Spirit of God. The Lord wants to get us to the place where we can walk in this world according to the Spirit. Everything that the Bible tells us about walking in the Spirit, we want to have that, and we want to have it now. Now is the days that we really need it, and here we go. God wants to set us free. He wants to break the chains, break the, the yoke, break the rope that ties us to this world, because Satan wants you bound up. The Holy Spirit, Yeshua, Abba Father, wants you set free. And so let's look at tonight. We're going to be focusing in a lot in the coming weeks on Acts chapter 2, because that gives us a great starting point of how to walk in the Spirit, because that's what they were doing. The, the Holy Spirit in Acts 2, though, is where we'll start, but we've got a lot to cover, and I'm, I'm so excited to be able to do this, because of course it helps me when I'm able to teach this. But basically, there are eight basic steps to deliverance. You don't need to write them all down now, because we're going to be covering these in great detail coming up. But here are the basic eight steps. Before I get to that, though, let me read a scripture from Luke 10 and 19. Yeshua said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Those are talking about demonic entities. And over all the power of the enemy, the enemy is the devil, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Do you believe that's true? Do you believe that the scripture is true? I believe it's true. And I believe that scripture is for you and I who are going about now doing the Lord's will, casting out demons, and taking control of spiritual things in our lives by the power and the magnificence of the Holy Spirit that is in us and is with us and wants to empower us to walk in this lifestyle. Now, here's the eight basic steps to deliverance to get us out of the dark dungeon and walk in the light. Number one, you need to recognize that there's a problem spiritually. You know, you're, you're, a lot of times your sicknesses, you want, I hear people discussing, you know, their maladies and I've got the sickness here and I don't have this going on right. A lot of times your physical sickness is a result of something spiritually that's going on in your life. Pray that the Lord will show you any demonic uh, infiltration, any demonic oppression, any demonic anything going on in your life. You need to recognize the spiritual battle that you're going through. Remember, God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeshua said that it's better for him to go away so that the Holy Spirit can come and be with us and be in us to get us to where we need to be. But if you're going to walk in religion, if you're going to walk in carnality, you're not going to recognize anything. And you're going to be going along, taking the same pills, walking according to the same ways, the same mannerisms, the same traditions. You need to be awakened by the Spirit of God. You need to be born again, again, perhaps, by the Spirit of God so that you can discern what's going on in your life spiritually. So you're going to recognize spiritually what's happening around you. And then you're going to take responsibility for your life. You're going to take responsibility for what has happened to you. The, the, if there's any demonic infiltration in your life, you have opened the doors. I've done the same thing. You've opened the door and the enemy's gotten in there. You need to take responsibility for what's going on and so that you can get the devil out of your life. The third step, repent. Change the course you're going. If Listen, if you, if you feel like you're uh, struggling with well, cigarette smoking, it can, it can be a physical malady, but it can also be spiritual. I know many people that started smoking, they can't stop now with this. Oh, it's a physical thing. Well, guess what? It's also a spiritual thing. And there are demonic entities in you that are helping you stop, keep smoking. Like uh, oh, alcohol spirits that want you to drink beer and smoke cigarettes at the same time. And lust and so forth. They tie it all together where you like smoking cigarettes so bad you don't want to do it. See, the big problem with our deliverance is a lot of times we enjoy doing the things we're doing. We know it's wrong, but we enjoy it. You need to repent and change the way you're going. Also, number four, you need to renounce those things that you're doing. You need to talk about them and renounce them verbally so that you can get the strength from the Spirit of God so that the Lord knows what side you're on. What side are you on? A lot of times we will say, okay, I'll get rid of this. Renounce it. Make your 
whatever's wrong with you, whatever's going on in your life, say you're a gambler and you know gambling is very demonic. People that start getting into gambling, there's a demon of gambling that'll cause them to not be able to quit. They'll sell out everything that they have. They'll steal to get money just so they can gamble. Even though it's not, they know down deep it's not going to win them anything, it's demonic. They need to renounce it. They need to declare war on it. You need to declare war on the maladies in your life. And then five, remove it. Cast it away. In the name of Jesus, get out of my life. In the name of Yeshua, be gone. In the name of Yeshua, be gone and don't come back. And of course, the devil's going to fight you, which brings you to number six. Resist the devil. The enemy's going to fight tooth and nail. He's very persistent that way. But remember the scripture that says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So do that. Resist the devil and stay in the fight. Then seven, rejoice because you are going to be an overcomer now. The Lord is going to give you the strength and the power to overcome. There's no question unless your heart caves in and you're not really the person that you think you are, but that'll just take you back to the cross and you, next time you'll be stronger yet. But you've got to be determined in this fight because it's going to take everything you have because the Lord is pulling you through something that is so dear to you and the enemy knows it and he's going to fight. But we always have the victory in the blood of Messiah. We always have the victory through the word of God. He always brings the victory. But just hold on. Praise God. Rejoice. And then eight, restore. Build upon what you're doing. Restore it. Now that you've gained, your, now that you've gained the strength that you've needed, Start to ascend spiritually. Start to help others in the same way. Start to testify of what the Lord's done for you. And you will find that the strength and the power you have all of a sudden is very real. And you're walking in your deliverance. The Lord came to set the captives free. Next, I want to discuss a scripture from 1 Corinthians 12. This is what the Apostle Paul wrote. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers are all workers of miracles. He's talking about spiritual gifts. We're going to be getting into the spiritual gifts in our teachings because you want to have an understanding of the spiritual gifts and you want to know what's going on and how to operate in the spiritual gifts. Not everybody's an apostle. Not everybody is a prophet or a teacher. Not everybody works miracles. However, have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? No, still. But covet earnestly. This is for all of us. This is not just for a few specific people. He's telling everybody he's writing to in Corinth, he says, but covet earnestly the best gifts. Now ask yourself, what are the best gifts? And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. So he wants us to covet earnestly the best gifts. The best gifts is what I've been talking about, setting the captives free. And the more excellent way that he's going to show, he goes into 1 Corinthians 13, which you understand will be the love chapter. So we pray tonight that God will grant us understanding and understand that when we move into the realm of the things of the Lord, God is love. God is wanting to change you and me. You don't want to be delivered just to, in order to have some day by day thing. You want to be delivered and set free forever. You want the love of God to be all over you. And the spiritual gifts bring us into that realm. It's all about people. We often stand on the firm, safe bank of understanding while the raging river of experience rushes by. It is in that moment of hesitation we miss the opportunity to gain knowledge. What am I saying? Here's what I am saying. Listen, you, by watching these videos, you, by praying about entering into the realm of deliverance and inner healing, you <clears throat> who desire <clears throat> this, this greater work, you, if that is you, you're going to be moving past any kind of just head knowledge. You're going to be moving now into the realm of experience. You're going to see and experience things in the Holy Spirit where you're not going to be able to deny them, and you're not going to be able to put them aside and say, well, somebody talked me out of them. You're, you know what you are seeing with your own eyes. You're, you're taking off like a bird. You're taking off like a bird and you're seeing things you've never seen before. You're, you're ascending heights you've never seen before spiritually. 
And now because you're experiencing all this, now you're gaining knowledge of a different world, of a spiritual world. And this is what the Lord wants you to understand. Get ready. Get ready. Have faith. Understand that the Holy Spirit is going to be opening up your mind and your heart to things you've never even considered before because you're going to be seeing things in a different realm, the realm of the Holy Spirit. Be careful, though, to walk by faith because it's the fear of what we don't understand that locks us up. If you, you don't get what I'm saying, perhaps, and you say, ah, that's just crazy talk, and you walk away. Don't do that. Stay tough because God will bring you the understanding that you need. This is part of growing spiritually. It's the ultimate danger of growing up. The ultimate danger is walking away and saying, ah, oh, that's not for me because I don't get it. You need to be strong. You need to be stubborn. You need to be locked in to what God has for you. And some, when you get into a daily dogfight in deliverance, you're going to understand that some days that are going to be different from others, but you've got to be determined. Make the commitment that you're going to move forward in your faith and watch what the Holy Spirit does in your life. Kierkegaard said, life can only be understood backwards, because we, we're always looking backwards, but it must be lived forwards. So we always have this challenge of things that we know we put into place because we're moving forward. But understand that the Holy Spirit, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he wants you to be in touch with him so that he can show you the future by showing you the past. And he can show you the past by showing you what the future is. God is eternal. And keep that in mind. It is the experience that you're going to have that brings understanding. Do you understand that? Now that's why it's important that you hang tough. Driving a car, playing an instrument, teaching a class, riding a bike, they all came as a result of practicing and, and doing things that at first you didn't understand, but as you hung tough, you learned it and you move forward. It's the same with deliverance. You're gonna be learning concepts and you're gonna be learning things to do and things to say, and it's gonna be amazing for you, but the Lord loves you and he wants you to be cemented in spiritually as an overcomer. Spiritual warfare, again, let us be bold to take the fight to the enemy. This will see the chains broken in many people's lives. This is where we want to get. And we want people, especially believers, to be able to walk in their life and have results in their life that'll, that will glorify God. It's not God's will that the body of Messiah falls into apostasy. It is not God's will that people backslide. It is not God's will that people don't grow to know him and love him. God wants to do something in the hearts of his people, those who call upon the name of the Lord. Remember, it says in the in, uh, First Chronicles or Second Chronicles, it says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then they will hear from heaven. But first, we got to get to the place where we, we're crying out for God to deliver us from those things that are binding us up right now. And that's why the Lord wants to do a work in our hearts. He wants to do this work in our hearts and to set us free. And it'll be, it's a process. Deliverance is a process. And it's a lifelong process that takes you through. It's meant to strengthen you all the days of your life. It's meant to strengthen you for your walk forever. And then you can say in your heart that you have rivers of living water flowing through you. As Yeshua said, what happened for his people? Praise God. Now understand today that we, we have a long way to go. And I'm going to be bringing these every day uh, in, the, uh, in many different aspects and so forth. And we're going to be looking at the, the subject in such a way that we're going to go backwards and forwards, up and down, left and right. And we want you to get everything that you can out of this because you will see that you're going to be able to experience things. You're going to, you're going to experience deliverance. You're going to experience a freedom you never had before. You're going to experience life, abundant life, that the way Yeshua talked about. It's not about just having money. It's about being able to live abundantly and happily and joyously and fruitfully. 
and serving the Lord and serving others as he would have you to do. The life the Lord has for us is far different from this carnal existence that most people experience in this world. He wants to set us free. He wants to take us aloft. He wants to help us to walk with him all the days of our lives on this earth. You know, heaven's going to take care of itself. But in the Lord's Prayer, it says he, that heaven, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. That's now. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. That's our provision. And lead us not into temptation. Now we're getting into spiritual warfare. And understand every bit of that is all about you being set free by the Spirit of God. Now I'm Rabbi Roy at Beit Mashiach. And we would like to invite you to come to our, well, we're starting to have our services again. We're doing all kinds of things we can do to uh, get our services where people can feel comfortable coming. On Sundays, we're going to be having our prayer time where we are going to be praying for people for deliverance and, and healing. Whatever you need, we will pray for you on Sundays, but we're going to start opening that up as well. We stay with our videos that we're putting out on Facebook and on YouTube because we're starting to put everything that we have out there because the Lord wants his people ready for the last days. And in order for us to be ready for the last days, we have to be set free. You can't be crippled going into the last days. You don't want to you don't want to be limited. You don't want to be spiritually walking with a limp. You want to be ready now to go through whatever it is the Lord will have his people go through and we will be going through things. Don't get hung up on the on the uh, the on the talking and all the conspiracies and stuff out there. Listen, that's all a distraction. Listen, all of that, you, there's a lot of things that are happening. Of course, the devil wants to kill us. That's his job. Of course, the devil wants to do a lot of things. Of course, there's a new world order. We've been warning people for years and years and years. But understand something. Jesus is still Lord. Yeshua is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's coming back soon. We're going to win. Whatever happens is going to, we're going to be right in the middle of it, but you need to be spiritually plugged in to be of any value in the kingdom of God. Most of the people that are hung up on conspiracies and are wondering what they're saying on the news, they're walking in fear of man. They're walking in the fear of governments. They're walking in the fear of something happening to them. My life and your life is completely in the hands of the Lord. There's no place else to go. So having understood that, just relax and allow the Lord to be the Lord of your life and to learn to understand that the Lord knows what's going to happen. He knows the end from the beginning, and he wants you to be set free spiritually now. If you would like to help us with the tithe and offerings, we would really appreciate it. You can go to baitmashiach.net, and you can... Uh, give there, or you can send a check or money order to Bait Mashiach and send it to 6194 Moonbeam Drive, Lake Worth, Florida, 33463. If you have any uh, uh, comments or questions or prayer requests, you can email me at acjoyroy, that's acjoyroy at gmail.com. And we just want you to understand Yeshua is King. He's the Lord. He's the Messiah. He's also the one that empowers us. He's also the one that equips us. He's also the one that wants you to be strong and filled with all that he has for you in these last days. He wants you to walk in freedom. He wants you to walk in strength. He wants you to walk by the power of his spirit according to the word of God. And that's what we are going to do at Beit Mashiach and for anybody else that we can help around the world and forevermore. God bless. Let me close tonight with the ironic benediction. Iverecha Karonai Varish Morecha Yaher Adonai Panavalecha Vihunecha Isa Adonai Panavalecha Via Semlecha Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, perfect peace. 
and B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, the Sar Shalom, and our soon coming Prince of Peace. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great evening, and we'll be talking again with you tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Bye-bye.